Hey, welcome back to Fire Engineering's Hump Day Hangout to our show, Issues and Challenges in today's fire service. I'm Chief Rick Lasky, along with my Hump Day Hangout co-host, Lewis Hill Assistant Chief Terry McGrath. And for, well, most of uh, the rest of our team, um, uh, actually, uh, Chief Bobby Halton is going to be out today. He's out uh, making the rounds, uh, visiting some folks. Uh, Chief Salka is supposed to be joining with us unless he caught a run with uh, his, his volley place, which always is a possibility. They've been, they've been pretty busy, but we're hoping he'll join us. Uh, we've got Chief Scott Thompson with us, as always. And uh, uh, again, we, we, we put together a great team a little while back um, uh, to, to, to host these shows and talk different topics and bring on some, some very special friends like we did today with Chief Eric Reeser from the Flower Mound, Texas Fire Department. Welcome, Chief. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's great having you, buddy. It's always great seeing you too, um, and, and getting caught up and everything. And uh, uh, to, to our viewers, uh, another great boss, another one who gets it, another fire chief who gets it, truly gets it. But we've got another great one lined up for you today. As a reminder, uh, we tell you this every show. If you have any questions, um, zip over to Twitter and send them out our way. Just make sure you add hashtag fe talk for for this show. And uh, uh, well, today, before we get to our topic, um, uh, Eric, what's go what's new? What's going on in Flower Mound, Texas, buddy? You guys are growing and building. And uh, how, how, again, for our viewer, for our viewers, how many firehouses are you guys up to now? Well, in February, we just opened Station 7. And so it, it, it was an area of town that kind of got skipped over years past as we as we grew out west. And, um, you know, the town's pretty linear across Lake Grapevine. And and so it got skipped over a big void in the middle of town. So I was able to come back and and build station seven uh, right there off of the North shore of the lake and be able to service the lake a little better and do some water rescue out of that house. So we're minimum staffing at 34 now per day with a fit on the, on the car and uh, station five is, is a truck only station now. Um, and then central central fire station has truck engine medic and battalion out of it. So uh, it gives us six engines, two trucks, three medics in the BC and it's, it has made an enormous difference for the organization to be able to respond to our, our one alarm fires heavy and take care of business for sure. Now, is, is five's the tiller? Which yeah, five is where the tiller went. Tiller house. And you guys, I mean, I mean, and, the, and, and sevens, and, and I've always, we've always kind of talked about a lot of different places that we get a chance. Scott's out there getting to teach a lot, you know, and has been for years. Scott, you get to see these stations that these departments that, it's almost like we're catching up. It's like we're catching yeah. up with firehouses. They're out building the firehouses. Eric, I remember a department in Florida, 250 member department, about 18 state. They, they were some of their ETAs that are to these multi-million dollar houses, like 20 minutes because they had outbuilt so far trying to get caught up. And I know you guys still have a lot of room uh, to go uh, and grow. And, um, uh, it, and we've always known that we've always said it's just a matter of time for all of a sudden, bang, all that building's going to go out west and uh, all the way to yeah. pretty much the speedway and um, to yeah. the airport out there. And um, you, you guys have been uh, been growing leaps and bounds. Um, uh, hey, before we go, and I, I had this in my notes, Scott and uh, T, before we go any further, just to remind folks uh, about FDIC, August 2nd through the 7th, uh, August 2nd through the 7th, back to Monday through Saturday. Um, I'll talk with Bobby the other day, Scott. Registrations are actually a lot higher than they thought. I mean, you know, right. when they're looking at uh, how many people usually sign up per day, uh, they're not that far off. So, um, you know, I think it's going to take us a year or two with all the conferences to get back to where we were, um, uh, you know, with budgets. You know, it's not as much people not wanting to go. I think a lot of it money wise is going to have to come back. But uh, and you saw where they extended the call for presentations also by yeah. a week or so. So exactly. I was just going to mention July 2nd. Yeah. Good one. Good. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. July 2nd is the uh, extension for calls for presentations, but August uh, 2nd through the 7th uh, deadline, July 2nd for 2022 back in April. So uh, uh, we, we got that, uh, we got that coming up, which is exciting, but uh, Terry, what uh, Louisville, what's going on, buddy? You guys had a good fire. Yeah. I said the guys did good, huh? Yeah. We had a nice little, uh, nice little fire yesterday that uh, had a, had a uh, disabled wheelchair bound um, elderly lady in that house. So, uh, but fortunately things worked out and they were, they were able to get her out prior to our arrival. But uh, yeah, so good fire this morning, went mutual laid on fire this morning to Highland Village. And we've got uh, seven positions open right now that we're testing for on July the 6th. That application process is open. So uh, 
uh, my shout out to uh, you know any of the uh, <clears throat> neighboring departments if uh, if uh, anybody now, <laughs> but uh, but no we're uh, so yeah we got uh, we got seven positions and uh, you know I think we've reached that point chief that um, this department's big enough that it's uh, we're kind of at that breakover you know where it used to be small and and easily managed and now we're we're big and we're we're I think Chief Greaser could attest to that you you're spread out now and and uh, the retirements are coming fast and furious and just we got a lot of a lot of guys that have, have done their time and dropping off the dropping off and and so we're got a lot of a lot of new faces around here so it's, it's not a dull moment that's for sure well for those that don't have their uh their their atlas pulled up which for some of our young people that used to be a like a paper map a long time ago you know or their maps go um <laughs> So Flower Mound, where Chief Greaser is from, they're on the west side of Louisville, the colony where Chief Thompson is from the east side. So we just need uh, Capel, Grapevine to the south, and then, you know, Lake City to the north, so you can recruit from all of them and steal from them. Um, you know, it's kind, of, it's kind of funny how everybody there, it's, you know, there are so, and to our, to our viewers, there are so many jobs in the Dallas-Fourth Metroplex for firefighters, and it's been this way for several years now. There's not enough candidates. So if you're, I tell people all the time, T, if you're a firefighter EMT, First of all, if you don't have anything, come on out there. If you're if you want to be a firefighter, there's departments Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, Desoto, you know that that'll that that are doing you know hiring general hires. And then if you're a firefighter EMT, there's a ton. If you're a firefighter paramedic with a, and I'll just say this, hopefully with a clean record, you you, you pretty much write your own ticket. And there's some great fire departments and the county and 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 Flower Mount are freaking awesome places to work with. With not just you know I'm saying this because the two bosses are sitting here, which you know like. Our, our, our my surrogate godfather chief al brunacini used to say you, you can't shit up you know it, it comes downhill it starts somewhere you can it's just messy but um um but you can it all starts at the top but it also has it also takes having great people great firefighters great bosses like all three of those fire departments do um you know the, the colony you know uh you know flower mount and and lewisville and uh terry by the way and, and you'll know where this guy when you see uh uh, my friend Michael McComas, tell him I appreciate the the kind words, uh, you know, the kind words that, that he was saying about me the other day. I appreciate that very much. Um, but uh, anyway, hey, our topic today, guys, um, uh, is firehouse safety and security and how much is, is too much and how much is too little. And I guess we're not necessarily talking about, <clears throat> we can, um, before we get into the security part, the safety part, you know, I, I ask people when I teach how many how many places out there are actually doing a fire station inspection, and I don't mean a safety inspection. I don't mean a fire inspection. We check in your necessarily just your fire extinguishers and things like you would do in a business. But you know, I, I started this in Trophy Club. We took about nine different uh, fire station safety inspection forms and cherry picked from all. I've sent it out a couple thousand times since then. And for any of our viewers, if you want it get my email at the end. I'll be happy to send it to you. And it covers everything, everything inside and outside from treads on the floor, normal stuff like fire extinguishers, but the grinders, eye protection, you know, flammable liquid storage outside, you know, every from, from, from roofing shingles being loose that you could visibly see to, you know, the trees not being trimmed because with parks, parks will tell you one of the leading causes with parks and recreation are orbital injuries, orbital injuries, people, you know, so they do the, three feet away from any sidewalk, seven feet high trim of the trees. So people don't get whacked in the eyes and stuff. And it has everything from that to, you know, every alarm, everything you could think of. And it, it literally, it, once you go through it once, it takes nothing to get through it, but the officer has to sign off. Any repairs, any needs are addressed at the end. And then all three station officers have to sign off on it. And what it does, it tells all three station officers, hey, this has been burnt out or this isn't working right or this is leaking or whatever. And there's follow up to it. And it's, it's pretty cool. So, you know, if you don't have that, folks, I'd be happy to send that to you. You should have that um, in there. And that also addresses station firehouse security, meaning, you know, door lockage, um, gate, you know, gates for the parking lots and different things like that. Um and the topic that, that Terry and I were talking about, uh, Scott and Eric, uh, you know, about this one was in light of, and we're going to get the chief greaser in a second here, folks, for our viewers, because um, um, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, they don't, if you don't follow the news, you didn't pick up on what happened, you know, necessarily Flower Mound, as well as a lot of other places. Um, you know, sometimes we take for granted that everybody loves the fire department and that, you know, and, and you know, a firehouse has always stood 
as a, a, a place of safety, a place where people, when they drive by the firehouse, I'm not trying to sound too goofy, but it's, it gives them a warm and fuzzy feeling on the firefighters in that neighborhood. You know, that's the place where people go for directions, where kids go when they're lost, seniors when they need help. You know, the firehouse has always been that. And we've never really thought of it as a place where bad things can happen. Um, you know, and, and sometimes in some cities uh, where some, some of the more distressed neighborhoods, you know, I remember working a couple of firehouses where we had the Cosentino wire up. We, we, you know, when I, when I used to spend time with Ray, with Ray Hoff, um, you know, with the chain link fence, with the, the stockade fences at the tops and bottom, because they used to shoot down at the cars, you know, engine four Tyler 10 at division Larrabee back in the old days. Now there's like a super target and a Starbucks across the street. But when it was part of the Cabrini green housing project, they were the only firehouse in Chicago. They used to park their cars inside because the, if you go by the firehouse today, it's riddled with bullet, bullet, bullet holes all over the firehouse. Um, they had five, eight cents, like five, eight cents, Lexan glass inside all the windows to protect them diamond plane for the watch desk and, and all that. And you, you, so you go, okay, you drive by some of these firehouses and you expect to see, you know, cars parked inside cages and stuff like that. But now you get out, you know, and, and, you know, you're like, ah, oh, we don't really have much happen here. Terry station three, Scott, when you work there, all of a sudden we're like putting cameras up and gates on things because cars get broken into and station six firehouse six out near castle Hills and regarded as a nice neighborhood, a nice area years ago. Remember, I don't know if Terry or Scott, if you remember exactly when that was Scott, you were, you know, chief with us then, um, you know, they, they left their back rear bay door open. Just nobody checked it. Nobody did that whole perimeter check. We'll talk about, I'm sure. And early morning, um, a drug addict female, she walked in and she was walking, she actually opened up the door to the bunk room and Rick Downey, one of the firefighters said, Hey, he thought it was one of the guys coming in early, turn the effing lights off. And she shut them off. And then she got a creeper and she loaded up because she couldn't lift it. She loaded a TV and wheeled it out to her car. And she was just stealing stuff. They found her at a car wash. I mean, just walk around the firehouse. And, and that's happened so many times, um, you know, in light of, you know, what just happened in California, uh, we'll talk about that. I'm sure, you know, uh, different scenarios, but we're uh, employees, uh, workplace, you know, we're a fellow employee, a disgruntled employee or ex-employee, but this was a current employee, you know, came back and, and, and shot two people, killed one, went back, let his, let his place on fire, shot himself and all that. Um, you, you just don't know. Uh, Terry, you know, you handle our IAs for a long time, our internal affairs investigation, you bomb an arson chief there. And there was always this concern. And then I want to throw this at, at Eric and Scott uh, as well. But Terry, every time we had to cut someone loose, every time somebody fired themselves, um, there was always that concern. Well, not always, but depending on who it was, all right, do we change the combinations and all the firehouse doors? And you know what happens if he comes back because he thinks that these guys betrayed him and he's made threats or stuff or whatever. And I always said, you know, I'd love to do it, but you don't think he can figure out a way to get into the firehouse after working all the time or doesn't have somebody that's going to tell him, well, no, I'll give you the combination, do it or whatever. But Terry, what were your thoughts every time somebody brought that up? You know, what are we going to do? Well, I, I, you know, it's, it's crazy now, chief. And, and if you came by any of our facilities today, every one of our stations has control access into the, into uh, the station. So everyone's issued the, the, the key card to have a numeric, uh, and, and so we can shut access to the station immediately, whereas in the old days when we just had the manual, uh, the manual style locks, uh, certainly it wasn't as easy. But unfortunately, and I think uh, Chief Greaser, when, when we get into the story of, of what recently happened uh, in, in a place that no one in their right mind would ever envision something like that happening. So, you know, I, I think when you when you said originally, you know, a topic for th the show, how much is too much and how, how little is too little. And 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 really in thinking about that, Chief, I don't know the answer, because in the stations that we we have a couple of states, this station where I'm at right now, if in my younger days, I could throw a rock and hit the jail. I uh, couldn't do it at, at my age now, but uh, <laughs> my window faces the place where the people that get let out of jail walk by holding their shoes and their shoelaces and go sit on the curb and lace their shoes up and walk off. So we're probably more, you know, hyper aware of our surroundings. This is kind of a busy intersection in our city. We've got a couple of fast food places right here. There's a lot of pedestrian traffic. 
Denton County Juvenile Probation is literally on the other side of our building uh, uh, in, the, in the next parking lot. So, uh, but we have some stations like you were describing earlier in, in our station out in Castle Hills and, and I think Chief Greaser station, it's sitting in a, in a, in a very, in, in the kind of place that you would leave all your doors open and you would hope that Saturday morning someone would come through that door with a plate of cookies or something like that. Um, so I don't know, you know, society's change and, and unfortunately, unfortunately we have to change with it. Uh, and, and to a degree that makes sense. I mean, you can't protect against everything, but, um, you know, I, I think, uh, the, the, the best thing that anyone can do is just be, you have to be way more aware than you used to be because That's right. everything's on the table now. Uh, and, and, and nothing sacred or safe, like you were alluding to earlier, chief, that firehouses were, were a place of, 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 you you stopped in there for help and it was always a it was always a great place to be and you know unfortunately you're a beacon now so i yesterday going home for lunch i pulled up behind a, a husband wife in a domestic deal uh she jumped out of the car when he when he started uh, to go through the intersection she jumped out of the car uh you know i mean it's just you just got to be so much more aware constantly well, and, and when I was at Interman Trophy Club, like I always joke about, Trophy Club was a great fire department, great guy, great guys there. Um, it was, I always tell people, Scott, it was the, it was Gill Gilligan's Island. It was a three hour tour. For some of our young f viewers, that's a really old show we used to watch. Um, uh, anyway, that being said, you know, it turned out to be a day short of a year um, fixing stuff. And it was a pain. I'll tell you, when I first got there, it was a pain because you had to use a key card to get in the firehouse anytime, you know, and, to get it to get into firehouse or to get into the quarters and the more you think about you know because even john was saying and, and i don't know if he's gonna be able to join us you know in the bronx they used to leave the doors open in the bronx all the time in the bronx in the heart of the bronx with the guys there's a guy in watch you know all that stuff you know things and you know he says you know yeah their cars were protected they had to lock things up because if you left the doors open you come back and stuff would be gone and so on and so forth <clears throat> but you don't think of somebody coming in you know, an opening fire and end up having a shootout in the firehouse and things like that. Um, you know, so the question again comes to you, all right, are you okay with leave? Cause you want to leave the doors open. You want to seem like you're yeah. part of the neighborhood. So they see the apparatus and all that stuff. So, so forth. It, it's hard. There's a lot of chiefs, you know, you know, and Terry Scott and Eric that have said, you know what, we can't do it anymore. Guys that were in quarters, doors are down. If somebody wants to get in, they'll, you know, they'll ring the doorbell. We'll go greet it. <clears throat> you know, but nowadays with cameras and things and so on and so forth, it's got a little bit easier, but, and before we get to Eric, um, Scott, what, what are you guys doing? And, you know, the County again, you know, since you've been there has grown leaps and bounds uh, personnel wise, stations wise, and that busy, busy ass fire department, you know, what, what, again, you know, nice town. What have you done uh, on your end or what have your guys brought up? I'm sure they brought up things, you know, everybody was talking about what happened in Flower Mound. Yeah, and, and we're a little behind. We just got cameras put into all our facilities. Of course, we're building new facilities. We just built fours. We're building fives, and they'll have the latest and greatest. But our other three stations are old, and they're just old traditional firehouses, and they got the keypad, you know, uh, like you're talking about. And, and we used to change them. We don't anymore. Um, so so we, we can probably be a little bit more proactive, and certainly what happened in Flower Mound has brought it to our attention. But, you know, it's an awareness thing. Like our station one um, – that's our only firehouse that's two stories. So when the doorbell rings, the policy is everybody comes downstairs instead of just, just one guy coming down to check the door. And that way, you know, if somebody's going to come in and, and try to rush them, they're, they're all there. So we have some of those, those things, but um, we're in the process. It's, it's been a multi-year uh, capital item to get security in all city buildings improved, but, but we're, we're a little bit behind the time, truth be told. Well, it was, you know, it was just a big push, you know, after 9-11 and some other things, everybody off, now we got to get generators, we got to get this, we got that, and we got to be careful with this and careful with that. And then it kind of, like anything else, ah, it ain't going to happen. We're back to our new normal and all that stuff and so on and so forth. And Eric, Chief Greaser, uh, Flower Mound, Texas, um, great, I, you know, I I have the the luxury and, and the honor of bragging on, on, on and I'll specifically, I know I, I get to brag on the county because Scott's one of our teaching partners and that, and we've been friends a long time and get to brag on Louisville. I always, there's two stories specifically, especially pride and ownership I talk about with Flower Mound, where it gives me a chance to brag on you. I always get to say, I always get to talk about Chief Greaser being a great boss and there's great firefighters and great officers there. I always talk about like Flower Mound and the county, you know, 
when 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 they show up at your fires, you have your favorite fire departments. You know, when you, you guys know it, being chiefs, without pointing to anybody, we were talking before we went live about a couple you know, that show up with no gear and no tools. But we all, as a, as a boss, when you're running a fire, and especially when things are going, things are shitting and getting, and you're looking and you're going, you turn and you see a couple of companies walking on the street on that next alarm. And I'm telling you, you know, when you saw the guys in the county walking up, when you saw the guys from Flower Mound dressed, tools, smiles, they didn't care what the assignment was. It wasn't, it, it, it wasn't like, oh, we're going to go do that. They didn't care if you said, guys, look, I, I need a favor. Take those shovels and see this big pile of, of horse poop. I need to dig that, move it over here and let these guys go fight the fire. And they're like, all right, chief. And they're high five. And I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's always, it's just, you know, it, it's a pleasure when you see those kind of people walking up, no matter what the assignments are. And Eric, I get to talk, I brag. There, there's a couple of fires. I specifically brag a couple of incidents about your guys. One is when I had the opportunity to talk about the Mayday with John Wright, you know, and then I get to yep. talk about a fire I went to once, you know, and, and just, Great fire department, great leadership, great community. And like Terry said, not the town you would think that would have anything kind of going on in a firehouse. So back up. So about, a was it about a week or a few days before the incident we're going to talk about, you guys, uh, your PD went to a um, uh, well-being check, right, for a suicide, possible suicide or something. Explain what happened there. Hey, just real quick on that. Yeah, boy, that was that was a, a career event in, in my mind um, and really some lessons learned from that one. You know, it came in from from the Y, a, a, a call, a single caller from the Y, a single shot, uh, presumed to be a suicide. Um, some mental health issues at, at the residence. We had ran on that house before, um, you know, so, you know, actually had some knowledge of the person. You know, I'll just say that he had attempted suicide before. Um, and so this was this was kind of a known a known address, but uh, you know the crew that responded in initially, what their staging would would be presumed to be okay, except for the house of the of the the event was in the T intersection of a residential neighborhood, and they're lined up straight with the front door. They're, I mean, literally lined up straight with the front door the way they responded in. Certainly, they've got some distance. You know, thank. God, that not only do I have ballistic gear on every riding position of our of our fire apparatus and, and our medics, but our PD is well equipped. And uh, you know, the officer had a little a little bit of a suspicion of the, of the call, and they all put on their their uh, their level A ballistic gear and had uh, had their shields in hand. Those shields were really only only rated for for handgun rounds, um, but they. Fortunately, he had a plate carrier vest on uh, rather than a soft vest. The three officers went in just to verify and were met with rifle round gunfire inside the house, which, you know, the, the injuries, you know, as I understand them, were really related to the shields coming apart from rifle rounds. Um, but literally the, um, the officer's life was saved. No question about it. His, his life was saved. He took one right, right, right to the center mass, right to the chest. Uh, and walked away from it. Um, look, we didn't even transport him for a long time. Where things got really hanky, though, was that we we moved up close when they when the officers you know called for medics, called for help, and we so now our medic is literally right at the front yard, um, and they're they're not they're unsure, they're un, unprepared, they didn't put their ballistic gear on yet. So there's a lot of missteps that that happen there. They think they're going to extract an officer that's mortally wounded, and that wasn't the case. Thank God. Um, but our medic then wasn't able to leave for the rest of the, the rest of the event and received some gunfire in the night. Um, as Louisville's tag team SWAT team came and assisted and robots and all the technology to try and bring this thing to, to a conclusion. But thank God nobody was, was mortally hurt or even seriously wounded. And, you know, but it was what an event, what an event where he was willing to, to shoot in the night um, at all the, the robots and the, you know, come outside and, and make, make rounds down the neighborhood. Well, and you know, a couple of things you brought up and I'm glad you brought them up because I had them in my notes, uh, Eric, what, you know, you know, and we've had Terry and I had uh battalion chief, Tammy K uh, K uh, Kaya from Dallas. She was in the first battalion and one of their 29 year uh, uh, SWAT guys, Sergeant, after the five police officers were murdered, by that coward uh, when uh, chief Brown actually sent the robot out with the C4, which some of the right. 
you know, sensitive folks out there didn't like, and, you know, Chief Brown's up in Chicago now, superintendent trying to deal with that mess. Um, and he, you know, like Terry would say, he, he, he grew up, he grew up on the, you know, he grew up in the, in, in law enforcement, you know, from the very beginning all the way through and all that. But I remember after that, Scott, I think we talked about it on the show here as well. It, it was like after, after 9-11, everybody went to buy their own masks, their own canisters. Instead of everybody buying the same stuff, everybody in a hurry to outdo each other, bought different masks, different configurations. Different stuff didn't, you know, match up or nothing like that. And then all of a sudden, everybody's out buying tactical body or armor for the people, which was fine. But with no policies or nothing. And, and you know, some departments, I won't say who, um, you know, uh, not to embarrass anybody, but so they bought they bought bulletproof vests for their for their medics or for the firefighters, and they were red, they were red, and 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 you know my my son you know you know you guys know my son was an FMF corpsman with the the Navy attached Marines which is a combat medic, and he brought up several things. He brought up well, we're we're not allowed to wear anything that makes it look like a corpsman because there's a bounty on us. They kill us. They kill a lot of other people. You know, they started doing that World War II with, with Japan. They stopped wearing the red crosses because why would you put your people in a red or a light blue or whatever? And the first ones that seemed there to really do it right, because look, we all of us, Terry, you're still in law enforcement, you know, still carry your peace officer certificate. You're a Dallas cop, everything else. Um, you know, I love our, we're very, very, very partial, all of us to our law enforcement family, to our dispatchers as well. But the goal should be to make your firefighters look look like police officers and right. and so many people were dressing their guys to look like cops and i wrote our policy where you had to wear your turnout coat over the vest or the vest if you and i use a picture from spring texas the vest they wear are the same material as the bunker coats the same striping the same it lo almost looks like a safety vest instead right. of a tech so when you look you see there's no doubt cop 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 oh that's a firefighter now that's not going to keep somebody from shooting a firefighter mind you but why would you because we, we always talked about it. If you if you remember the old LA city, remember the bank robbers, the guys that years ago, they had a tactical body armor. Do you guys remember? And they were walking on the street and you they're, they're being shot and the fire engine made a left instead of a right. And as he drove between the police officers and the bad guys that are exchanging fire, the, the bad guys with the rifles went and they waited for the engine. Well, they don't do that anymore. So why would you dress your guys up, number one, in, in body armor that makes them more, look more like law enforcement, where again, I know... I know that they're they're still going to, going to um, come after you know firefighters no matter what, but you know at least be smart about. It. Secondly, and, and 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 tactical medics is a whole other show. And Terry, you remember you and I talked about this. My son asked. He said, "Dad, he goes after we had the big thing in trophy club at the high school with the the bomb threat with the guy from Europe was talking to the kid in class and was given actual he, on the phone saying, well, two flower mound.'" police officer just walked by me i'm like oh my god they're this guy's calling live stuff out you know anyway that being said my son's like dad why would you put paramedics in the hot zone he goes i understand he goes i don't care if they're police officers or not how often do they train he goes he goes you know police officers are in that mentality all the time bad guy mentality because they have to be he says your guys go and train once a month maybe twice a month whatever some of them carry guns some don't he goes Look, I'm going to tell you, he goes, I train all of my Marines and Scott, your, your son, you know, I mean, he says, I train all my Marines on how to use a tourniquet and I equip it with tourniquets, two tourniquets each. He goes, and I train them how to save one of their buddies' lives till I can get to them. He goes, the only thing you're going to do for a down police officer is control the bleeding. He goes, and why would you put them up there where they're being shot? You know, he goes, I understand in a forward position where they're protected. He goes, but he goes, I, he goes, I'm not trying to sound bad. And he brought up some very interesting points about how far do you go to put a firefighter paramedic that is, was sitting watching television after having lunch and now is wearing body armor and is crawling next to the cops. You know, at what point do you not train the cops how to, like the Marines, Scott, how to drag a buddy to a place, what he used to call dad, a security position or place of safe refuge where he, cause he goes, if I'm going to be treating him, he goes, I always had security. He goes, I always had somebody because I have to put my rifle down. I have to kneel on it. He goes, and I'm taking care of a wounded Marine. My head's not up looking to see who's shooting. And he had people shooting at him at one time. He goes, I've got what they call security. I've got someone covering me. He goes, so who's the, he goes, I, I just don't understand it. So I guess that brings up, you know, a, a whole topic for another day is how far yeah. do we put our people in the hot zone when it comes to that? 
we love our cops, we take care of our cops, but what good are we doing by putting someone who drills once in a while on it up here where they should be maybe here, not out here, but you know, close enough where you can render aid. But I've seen some in areas I'm going, why, why, why are we, why are we there? You know, why don't you, the only thing he's going to do is the same thing that officer could do. And it's apply a tourniquet. And then they're going to have to drag them out to start getting fluid. They're not doing that out in the open. They got to get them somewhere else or whatever. So that, that's, that's one thing. That, that's an interesting point. And the, the body armor, look, I'm all about it, Eric. I'm glad we're doing that now for our people. Give them the option to wear it. They can wear it. They don't have to wear it, you know, um, unless some places order you to wear it, depending on where you're at. But some smarts as to what color and how you're doing it. Um, so, so, I mean, so this happened how many days before the incident at Station 7? So the same, the same shift. So their very next shift. Oh my God. Very, we finished, you know, uh, I thought it was, was like the, a week apart. No, no, no. Oh, so I was God. in the command post that, that, that first event the all, all night long. It, it resolves by daybreak. Uh, you know, they get off, they go home. Um, you know, we, we probably bob, bobbled a few things there, you know, with some CISM of the crew that was, that was directly embedded in that. But, um, you know, the very next day, the very next shift, um, my phone rings at about eight o'clock from the, the BC who, who's in route to the call. He says, Hey, we've got a, we've got an active event in fire station seven. I said, an active event. He says, yeah, we've got a, a potential shooter in the station. I said, God, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, uh, unbelievable. And these, uh, in this neighborhood, like I said, and it has nothing to do with neighborhoods. I shouldn't say that because, you know, some of us did grow up in the best of places, including myself. And you're like, you know, it just, but it's affluent. It's well, at, well the, it is what it is. Yeah. Sign up the streets says, you know, the house is starting at 1 million. Um, you know, it's um, big, big locks, big mansions. Um, you know, when we built the, the fire station there, it's shoehorned in a neighborhood. I mean, it was, it would look, it was land deeded with the development 20 years ago and uh, presumably unbuildable because of the grade and the, the water issues and things like that. But, you know, our, our neighbors are front, we're in their front yards. And so we put up a, a very nice uh, horizontal cedar rail fence, um, not rail, but, um, you know, a, a privacy fence, really not, not all for security, although that's there, but look, so our lights don't shine in their front door. I mean, we're, we're right in the neighborhood in the very affluent homes. Um, you know, this, this call came in and, you know, there's a park just about a, a eighth of a mile up the street, a real nice park off, off the side of the road. And, you know, people were reporting that a, that a man without a shirt on and with a long gun was, was presenting in the park and everybody's in panic. The, the phone, the 911 calls. Nobody knows off. where this guy came from. He just showed up. He didn't live there, right? He, he, li he, what, he lives just an, another eighth mile up the street. Oh, and, good Lord. and we had made a run in the night, um, not fire department, PD had. Um, so I think, you know, some domestic issues going on, I'm saying post COVID issues, you know, is this where society is as we evolve, uh, post COVID, um, you know, as a fire department, you know, we've really you know, kind of settled back off of some of the COVID restrictions where all the doors were closed and don't, you know, don't let anybody even in, in the, in the front four years where the restrooms are, uh, for the public. So we had all that lockdown. Now, now we're open. And, and, and chief, the, you know, the doors, all four bay doors are open on the secure side where the fence is, where, where the firefighters park, those are open. They're open on the public side. Um, and look, it's a beautiful Saturday morning. It's been raining here for weeks and it's a beautiful Saturday morning. The crew checks their trucks. Now they're in the, in the, in the workout facility. They're in the, in the fitness room. Some are on the treadmill, some are lifting weights. Everything's, everything's just a beautiful Saturday morning. Everything's good. The phone call they get, that fortunately, God willing, the, the captain had the apparatus cell phone on him. So he had, he had the iPhone on him. Uh, the house phone is in, in the fitness room, and they ring simultaneously. Dispatch is calling on the house phone. The BC is calling on the, on the cell phone. And, and, and it goes like this. Lock it down. Lock it down. You've got a shooter you know, coming, coming in. And it's like, almost unbelievable. Can you imagine you're the officer in your firehouse and they're telling you you're working out? It's a Saturday, like you said, it's beautiful. And you're getting a call to lock it down. There's a shoot. I mean, just I can't imagine. It, it just doesn't even compute. Not not in my wildest, you know, you know, assessment of threats. Am I thinking that that's why we built the security fence? That's why we did the, the you know, a few things uh, on that facility uh, as we worked with the architect to try and improve 
uh, you know, our next generation of firehouse. But uh, uh, so it goes like this. When they, they, they hung up the phone and they poke their head out the, out the door, which takes them into that secure area behind the fence. And not only is it a fence, but we have a rolling gate um, that closes that off. So when the apparatus returns the quarters that go through that rolling gate, that gate ends up preventing PD from getting to the backside of the firehouse. So they have to scale the fence. And, you know, there's some, some other lessons learned with that. But when the crew poke their head out, the very first thing they hear, they hear is, where the hell are you? I know you're in here. Where the F are you? I mean, the, the guy is yelling for him. He's already in the station. This he's the already shooter. in the, the yeah, yeah, the potential shooter is already already in the bay and he's screaming for him. And, and you can imagine, uh, you know, the cap there is a great, great, great guy, Steve Beagle. And, you know, he is, you know, he says, my heart sank, you know, like, how could this be? You know, it, it's already, he's already in. Um, one of, one of my other firefighters, there's a purple heart recipient and been to combat and, and he goes into combat mode. I mean, he, he's, he's, he, you know, he's right in the element now, like, Hey, it's, it's time to take action. So they, they bail out of the back of the station and over the fence, over the HOA masonry wall and right into our neighbor's front yard. So bam, within seconds, they're, they're pretty secure. Right. Um, they, they've got themselves out of harm's way in, in, in just a few seconds. Had he have got into the station, like down the center hallway, look, today they built, the, you know, all the fire stations are built with minimum number of steps to get to the, to the truck for response times. And so if he'd have made it to that center hallway, you know, you, you don't have a whole lot of other options. Um, but they, they got out, they, they, you know, now they're safe. I mean, the rest of the story is they're safe. Um, but immediately they shift gears into, okay, um, who, if, if, if it goes down, who's going to treat, you know, what, you know, we're, we're going to be the first medics here. Um, and so shortly after there our one of our officers um, enters the bay. Uh, he, he walks around the, the, the end of the truck and the gentleman, gentleman's the wrong term. Uh, the actor lowers, lowers his shotgun at him. You know, so he's got a shotgun leveled straight at him. Um, he, he fires off several rounds, several of which hit our fire truck. Um, station wall, things of that nature. Fortunately, you know, as it turns out, he, he, he wasn't struck by those rounds. Um, you know, the officers, this is probably one of the, what I'm told is one of the best um, accurate um, shots of, of our, our FMPD. Um, but he missed all, all five, missed all five rounds and uh, subsequently was able to tase him and, and, and subdue him at the, at the captain's door of the apparatus. Um, you know, so the very first treating medic is um, firefighter Carol, one of you know the, the one I spoke about a second ago that's been to, been to combat. He's the very first one to treat him and, and trying to, you know, get get a handle on you know what are the injuries is he is he is he wounded in such a way he's really only got some head injuries but man it just it just totally opens up that at any time any place somebody you know so you didn't, it doesn't matter they where you're at or, or whether you're in a, in an area of, of more threat or you're in a, in a very affluent neighborhood like station seven is for Flyer Mount fire department. Well, I can't imagine. And, and, and Scott and Terry jump in here as well. Cause both, you know, both of you with your guys, um, you, you mentioned just the shift before the guys are dealing with a, uh, Hey Bobby, uh, just before um, you're talking about uh, the guys dealing with um you know, a shooting, your ambulance got, your ambulance took a round at that one, right? With the suicide sure the guy sh who shot well, three cops, right? Two or three, 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 three police officers. That crew gets off duty, comes back, you know, gets back to work. And like you said, it's a flu neighborhood. And this guy walks in a firehouse and just the thought, can you imagine when you talked about debriefings and you know, and critical incident stress management, when he's yelling, I know you guys are effing in here. Where are you at? You know, something along those lines. He, I'm sure he just didn't want to talk to him. You know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the, the thought of what would he have done? What would have, just, what would have happened? Think about what God might, what have happened if dispatch didn't call and say, Hey, you guys got a shooter, a guy with a gun walking around, you know, in your apparatus bay. And, and a guy walks out there, you know, who's in there. Oh, wait on a second, sir. I'll be there. In a, you know, I mean, like we normally do. Yeah. I, I mean, we could be talking about a whole different, horrible, God awful scene. I mean, this is Farmont, yeah. Texas. This guy walks the firehouse, and it's a shootout, you know, between PD and all that. Um, 
you think so you know i what i take away from this chief and and so i in not in a million years right does anybody at work and you know i I think if you're in a fire station in south dallas or in a place that's prone to violence prone to it's 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 it happens more than it does at station seven in flower mound texas but the point to all that is that when dispatch called that station locked down because I have to be honest with you, there's a lot of people right now that, so, you know, that I don't have a lot of time to tell you something, but dispatch calls and says, lock your station down. So there's a bunch of us who would be like, well, what's this all about? Right. So, right, right. you know, <laughs> Hey, I'm going to walk down the, like, cause I'm going to go solve a problem. What do we do for a living? We go and solve problems. Hey, there's something in your bay, lock your station down. Well, I'll, I'll go out here and figure out what's going on. And so, you know, I, my hat's off to these guys. Um, one of our personnel was in, so they had a deal at a, at a shopping mall in Dallas a couple of weeks ago, uh, a, 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 a mental health crisis issue in the mall. Security's trying to deal with this guy. He makes a lot of loud noises that people who aren't witnessing what's happening uh, think it's gunfire. Someone yells, shooter, the whole mall erupts into, you know, whatever. But the point to all that is that as as this herd of people are running by where our firefighter and his wife were sitting, they're yelling, there's a shooter. But there's a certain number of people that are sitting there and it, it doesn't process. Right. And, and I'm not faulting anybody for that because I'm certainly of that. You know, when I, when I would go to work as a police officer, I used to always say I felt a lot safer in South Dallas and Oak Cliff than I did if I was in a more affluent neighborhood because I literally got out of my car, every, every contact I made with somebody, I, I 100% viewed it as a potential threat. I was always on guard, whereas when you're at Station 7 in Flower Mound, hey, look at this, man, it's million dollar homes. And, and so when you get that phone call, lock your station down, whatever the code word is, whatever the buzzword is, it's time to react. And, and you think about it with the business that we're in, right, Chief, as you always say it. It's not out until we say it's out. There's no fire till we say there's no fire. And, and, and our investigative nature is, well, there's a problem outside. Let's go see what it is. And so, you know, I, I mean, my hat's off to your guys because if I had to lay money on a table that morning, if I, let's take a guess what's going to happen today. It wasn't that scenario. Zero. And never in a million years would you would you find yourself involved in that. Just like you said, look how many different ways. And, and Chief Halton, thanks for for joining us today. I know you, you're in the middle of a bunch of stuff. Um, we just talked br- briefly to get you caught up about the sh- the very shift before this shooting in the firehouse of Flower Mound. The guys had a pretty much a suicidal subject barricaded, shot three cops in Flower Mound, shot their ambulance. I mean, with a right. I mean, and those guys get off duty, come back to work on a Saturday, and this all happens. This guy walks in his firehouse and then, I mean, looking for them to shoot him. That's what I'm going to say. Cause that, I don't think he was looking to say, hello, can I have a cup of coffee? And, and they end up in a shootout, the cops with this guy in his firehouse. Um, you know, so we're talking about where, where do you go with security? Where do you go with, you know, I mean, what do you do? Uh, some of this stuff, I don't know if we'll ever be preventable because I don't think we, I, I hate to say that we're kind of the word bulletproof, but I mean, there's nothing, you know, you're, it's a firehouse. If people want to get in or people want to do stuff, it's going to happen. But, but what, how far do we go? And, and Bobby, we got you now here. How far do you go with protecting your people regarding firehouse security and things like that? I think the policy thing, Terry, you brought up, you know, it's one thing to have a policy. What do you do, you know, security wise in your firehouse, but I agree with you, Terry. You know, if somebody called and said, lock it down, you've got whatever, there are going to be some guys, what, 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 what the hell's going on? What are you talking about? And they're going to want to walk out there or see what's going on where these guys bailed, after, especially after this guy opened up the door and said what he said, where are you at? I know you're effing in here. What a, what a gun, what a little long gun, you know? Yeah. So, Bobby, that was where we're at. We're talking about what, what do you do? You know, you know, it's hard to keep a disgruntled, employee who knows the combinations and all that stuff, but just general firehouse security. You're on mute, buddy. I apologize. I'm on my phone. I'm in the, 
I'm in the Chicago airport because the folks at American Airlines thinks it's better to fly from Tulsa a thousand miles to Chicago and then another 1,200 miles down to San Antonio, just so you get a, an idea of the entire breadth and width <laughs> of the nation you know, with your with your tickets. So thank you, American Airlines. Just kidding. There's um, some flight difficulties to this morning. But I am heading down to Chicago to visit with uh, Charles Hood and, and the men and women down in San Antonio. But you know, to the Flower Mound incident, it, oddly enough, this morning, uh, before I went to the airport, I had a uh, call with Jess Milner. Um, and Jess is a uh, Norwegian firefighter. And they're experiencing a lot of the same uh, acts of violence, if you will. And acts of violence towards uniformed persons um, is, is on the rise there. And our friends, um, uh, Steve Marsar, and I'm trying to remember who the other fellow was from FDNY recently did a really good um, presentation on what they did during the uh, civil unrest in New York City. But the, the problem becomes for us as uniform personnel is that the, the um, <clears throat> We, we were always kind of sacrosanct, right? We were kind of like um, untouchable. Folks didn't want to, you know, mess with firefighters. But that's changed. And you know, it, when you look at work workplace violence, like the firefighter was killed in, in uh, uh, Los Angeles County, and and the Flower Mound incident, and there's many many others. You know, we have to be prepared for for all of that. But how can you it becomes the question, right? And I think that general readiness, fitness, good communication, um, that's going to be the key. You can't, you can't uh, prepare for every single scenario. You can't, you know, who, who would have ever imagined 19 men flying airplanes into buildings intentionally, simultaneously on the same day? That, you know, that kind of uh, malevolence and evil is almost um, incomprehensible. But we, we can, and I think John Lejeune from the Marine Corps did a great job of this, we can prepare ourselves physically, emotionally, spiritually, uh, tactically to the best of our ability um, all the time. And I think that that's where esprit de corps and discipline and uh, good communication and, um, you know, and, 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 and knowing one another well, right? One of the problems that we see in all the AARs that come out after action reports is that oftentimes a, a lack of familiarity, a lack of commonality between you know people causes problems. In other words, they don't trust one another implicitly. But luckily, the men and women in, in Flower Mound, you know, were able to you know trust one another implicitly and 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 get cover. So I think it's fascinating. It's a it's a fascinatingly complex topic to to to, well, Bobby, uh, you, to tackle. You, I think you're the one that brought it up, and I already brought it up. I think we we, we talked about the show before about, and I, I swear it was you that brought it up once before, in in L. A when they had years ago, the bank robbers in the full body armor and they're walking down yeah. the streets and the cops are shooting and the bullets are just pinging off them. <laughs> and the right. fire engine made a left instead of a right. And instead of shooting, he actually pulled the rifle up, waited. Both of them, both, both both of the bad guys raised their, raised their long guns and allowed the fire engine to pass through the scene, then lowered their weapons back and, down and started doing And back to your point you just made, Bobby, that ain't That's it changed. anymore. That, that, that has changed. It. You know, you know, exactly where, and we already talked about color of vests and not buying the vests that make your guys stand out. You know, I mean, let's, let's, let here, but, oh, there, that, that guy must be important. He's got the red one or the, or the blue one on that I can see, but. Um, Our target acquisition. I mean, oh, exactly. Just, you know, that's so, not a, that may not be the right way to go. That's assuming that you think that the bad guy is going to respect non-combatant, you know, apparel, but. Right. Uh, th th Any more that's lost. I mean, symbols of authority are just considered symbols of authority. And if someone's upset so, with authority, that's what I do. That. Well, Eric, what, so so this all went down. Uh, thank God your guys are OK. Uh, thank God. Thank God. God placed one of your combat veterans, a Purple Heart guy, as part of that crew, because that always helps to have somebody. You know, it's always like it, it's like you turn around, you've got an electrical problem at the house. You turn to your electrician. You know, and you're like, remember Terry and Scott Penny, what, what's going on here? Or you turn to your plumber, you turn, well, you got a combat dude standing there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that, you know, and, and um, like I said, Flower Mound's always been one of my favorites. They're, they're the guys, when you see, like I said earlier, you see them show up at a fire, you go, thank God, things, things are immediately going to get better here when they show up on the scene. But what, so, so, so this all happened. All right. What have you guys done? Obviously, you did some some uh, critical incident stress management because, especially with these guys being the same crew, one ship before, 
that this guy shot three of your cops and shot one of your ambulances and now they come back to work and this happens, you know, I'd be worried about coming back the next day going, okay, what's going to happen on day three. So obviously you did that kind of stuff. Number one, are uh, your guys doing okay? Yeah, I, th- I think, I think so. You know, t- time will tell, but you know, we, you know, we started down that road actually Louisville sent a team over and, and assisted us with the, with the debrief and the CISM on the follow-up on that. And we're very appreciative of, of sharing that resource. And um, we've had the opportunity to share ours and appreciate those coming in uh, to, to assist us with that. So I think we did the, the initial piece there. There's probably more work to be done. Heck, we know there's more work to be done, in the, you know, just at large uh, with, with, you know, all, all the mental health issues that, that, that we know that are, are prevalent. And you take, take a few incidents like this and start, questioning a, a few things and I think that's where you know the work to be done moving forward and even looking at some of the station security things we you know we, we were talking earlier about the keypads and 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 you know we know that we you know we've got a keypad issue that has been the same the same simple uh, access piece for a long time and so we're working on that uh, we're looking at that you know look if you're going to be in the bay in the bay uh, with the doors open, so be it. But can you close them? And you know, right now it's over 100 degrees in Texas, and, yeah. and there's reasons to keep the doors open. And like you said, the the icon of the firehouse and and what it symbolizes to America. But man, we are we're we're vulnerable. And even if you keep them closed, that very next Sunday. So that was Saturday. Here comes Sunday, and at Central Fire Station, you know where that's at. Um, now it's built up. We got apartments, four story apartments that surround us. Um, but um, you know, that very next day, a lady pulled up on the ramp, ran into the bay and said, I need to use the restroom. She went in, they escorted her in uh, to the watch office restroom. So now she's in the firehouse. Fortunately, you know, they stayed with her. But on the way out, she grabs a, a firefighter's backpack and headed for the car, um, headed, headed for the car. They, you know, they, they stop her. They get the backpack away. Uh, PD makes an arrest down the street where, where you know, it looks like maybe a, a, she was a stolen vehicle kind of situation. And, you know, but, you know. What, you know, I'm thinking, what what is going on? I mean, society, what's going on here here in a in a in an area um, that just you wouldn't think? And it, I, I think the message today, anywhere, anytime, any place, that's where society is right now. Well, and and it's it works out well, Eric, that we've got. If you looked at a map, Flower Mile, Louisville, the colony, all in a row represented here on the show, just coincidentally. You know, my 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 question is next. So, what actions? We've got people watching. A lot of people are going, okay, we understand what happened. Yeah. You know, a lot of bosses are sitting there going, okay, um, you know, I have to look at my firehouses. I have to. So, and I'll throw this to Scott, then maybe Terry, then Eric, and, you know, Bobby is, what, what, what are your thoughts? What, you know, everybody should be looking at their own, their own policies, procedures, you know, their SOGs. They should be looking at their firehouses, you know, security wise, camera wise. Are we doing, keypads to even get into the living quarters you know all right if we don't leave the bay doors open like john says we left the doors open in the bronx we still do in the bronx guys on watch with him open he goes now our cars are all secured and all that stuff and we have to close the doors when we leave but you know so scott what you know any thoughts you know we talked about this briefly at the beginning uh there's got to be things going through your head as the boss there as to okay we we need to look at our own firehouses because look they're they're five minutes from us. You know, this could happen here. If, is there anything you, you know, I guess that's a question. Is there anything you could do to tweak what you've got or, you know, are you comfortable? Like I'll just say trophy club, you can't get in that firehouse without having a keypad, a key card to get in to anything inside, except the base. You can get in the base, the base doors are open, but everything else, every single time you come in, if you're working, you got to hit that. You have to punch a code or you got to use your, your, you know, your, your, your card. So at least you can't get into the quarters unless you're knowledgeable of the combination or you have a card. Are you doing anything different in the county or are you in the process of thinking about, let's look at this and do a little security check? I'm, I'm giving it a lot of thought. You know, Terry called me that morning, but, but I'm going to say this. You know, I remember when I watched the Oklahoma City bombing, I thought this is the worst thing I'm ever going to see in my lifetime. And, and that's been proven wrong. But, you know, this is probably going to be the unpopular opinion, but we can't address everything. You know, our number one fire station was the very first building built in the colony. It's an icon in the community. People come and go. Uh, I don't want to lock it down, you know. And the minute 
we lock these down, we, we're still leaving the station. If somebody wants to do harm to us, they're, they're going to find a way to do it. Um, and so, you know, I want to still maintain that, that community interaction to where we're approachable and, and, and we're still there and, and let people see us and know us. And, and, you know, I'm not smart enough to address every single thing that's going to happen to us. And so the obvious things, yes. Can, can we make improvements? Absolutely. Are, are we going to address them all? So, so I, I'm trying to think about what is that, what is that attempt to, to protect our people, which I want to do, but still be approachable by the community and, 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 and not, you know, not go crazy about things like this. I mean, we've gone a long time um, uh, and made it this far and, you know, it hasn't happened. So you look at possible, probable uncertainties. And so that's kind of my, are the thing improvements we can make? Absolutely. But, but we're not, you know, we're not going to go crazy. Well, and then, Bobby, you know, can I just jump in real quick, Ricky? Cause I, I agree with everything Scott just said. I think he's put it very, I think he's put it perfectly, Scott. And thank you. And I love the new microphone. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. My son gave me that. That's from Brayden. That's fantastic, hey, Braden. Way to go, man! That's, I got to keep up with you, big big wigs. Now that I'm a part of this team, you know, I, I yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I'm my rookie my, status. I'm fold, holding my phone in my hand, <laughs> my, my 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 cricket. I've got my cricket in my hand. So it looks it, like so, you're in the airport. You got smoke showing behind you. I I, I am in, I am in the airport. So I know. I'm, airport. It, yeah. I'm, I'm in the airport lounge. I got you. So, okay. Um, so, but the other interesting thing, I think Scott said it perfectly well. You know, and I, and I think I think the biggest mistake we could make would be to live in fear. In other words, you know, we, we've just got to be with everything, we, with all the risks we assume in life and especially as firefighters, you know, we just got to be a safe haven. We've got to be a place where people who are really in trouble can run, can run into the door and say, help me. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that there's a fine line to walk. Right. And I think there are places where, as Scott said, there are some certainties. So if you're in a community that's just you know, in terrible disarray or very prone, okay, you got to take some extra security. But if you're in a community that's normally, you know, like a flower mound or a Louisville or a, you know, colony or, you know, that's a different story. But the one thing I did want to comment on, this is the first time ever on a hangout where every member of the hangout has been at a fire together fighting fire that <laughs> I've not- ever Right, right, Scott. Yeah. You, you and I, Ricky, yeah. Eric, absolutely. Terry, have we have all fought fires together, and I think it's the first <laughs> time we've ever had. Right, guys. Brilliant That's observation. Like, Brilliant observation. <laughs> but, but isn't it? But but isn't it? It's true, guys. It's. Very I think cool. it's the first hangout where everybody on the hangout well, has actually been to a fire together. And that's kind of where I was going. I said, uh, you know, cool. you're looking at a map. Even before you came out, I said we're kind of all right, right there, but. Bobby, going back to what you said, that's kind of what's going on. Like at first when I got the trophy club, I was in, I'm like, what a pain in the ass. Every time I have to go in this, but so I'm like, well, it's not bad. We leave the doors open back and forwards, the firehouse, people drive by, Hey, they're the guys and all that stuff. But we have the ability that the only way you get into inside the quarters, there's a vestibule. You can get it. You can, a person can run in and hit the buzzers, the beepers and all stuff. And they're right in there. You know, that they can even lock that door if they wanted to into the foyer, if they wanted to, to, you know, but you know, at least hey. at least the guys are inside. Go ahead, Eric. Hey, so the, immediately after that, so our, our architect, you know, several Lewis schools use them. BRW is a is a, a, a you know renowned architect here in the state of Texas for sure. They've done hundreds of fire stations and great and, and and very skilled at what they do. And immediately, I got a I got a call from our 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 stakeholder and from the from BRW the firm, and really wanted to talk about hey, are there lessons learned that they can take back? in station design. Heck, we just opened the doors in February. I mean, this is a brand new house. I told you about the, the, the fencing and, the, and that. And immediately we went to that conversation, exactly what you're talking about, that access control point from the bay to the airlock, from the bay to the storm shelter inside. You know, we, we, um, we Flower Mound decided not to do it. We decided not to put access control inside the bay preventing you know an actor from going from the bay into the into the vestibule or into the into the firehouse um and and we you know brw and i had that discussion about you know maybe that's something we want to look at in the future maybe it's something we want to retrofit and add uh i know that grapevine fire department has it um you know we fill in at their station five quite often and and know know a little bit about that and some of their newer newer houses, they've incorporated that in there. So I think it's certainly something as we design new fire stations, something to consider because at least you can you know not have an actor go from 
the bay to the fire into the living quarters. Well, and Eric, it's exactly like I said, the one place there was a keypad, the front or rear outside that if mutual aid companies or change quarters companies are coming to fill in, dispatch could call real quick on the phone and say, here's the code. And you could always change it. That's a simple computer change. Yep. But everybody had their, their electronic cards. So be, oh, this is such bullshit. You know, the electronic cards are a pain in the ass. I'm like, you know, at least you can't get into. And here's the other thing. They have that, the, the, they have the, uh, the community room that they allow different groups to use. So now you, you're going to close those. You can you shut the doors in the hallway. People can come in. You can program them. They can come in when, and they lock afterwards. You know, there's a lot of places that have that. So actually, it was actually that part of it was put together rather well. Where, you know, you, you, there is... And it's really not, I don't think it's that big of a deal that somebody walks up to your firehouse and they walk in the foyer and they can't, they have to, you know, bring it, you know, press a, a buzzer or something. And somebody comes, yeah, hey, how you doing? How's my mother get my blood pressure check? Yeah, come on in. Or at least you've got that part secure, maybe, you know, and the, you can still have the bay doors open and people still see the firehouses there and all that stuff. Just like John said, we had the doors open in the Bronx. They still have open the Bronx. There's a guy on watch there, you know, that kind of stuff. You can still have that, you know, you know, I guess the lessons would be, you know, I mean, you could be on the floor checking rigs a bag. I can, there's no way to predict everything. We know that, you know, but at what point, I mean, you know, we've got cameras on buildings now. It's, it should be, it's pretty easy to put security cameras in buildings now. I mean, how we have ring cameras everywhere. You can't, you know, do that kind of stuff. Um, you know, we had them. Uh, I remember at all our firehouses, when I was a firefighter, we had the front rear door, where the front door, if you open up a door, it rang once. If you open the back door, it rang twice. So we told the chiefs it was for security reasons. Let us know somebody's coming through the front of your door. It was mainly to let us know if the chiefs are coming through the doors. But you know, are there you know, there's ways to make sure you know when you hear a door open. You know, there's like you could put these little tones that go off to let you know. There's ways to do it. That hey, somebody just came in the back door or the front door of the bays when they're closed. If you have that stuff open, like we did, where it's not you know locked or whatever. But I think the parking lot security has become, even in the nicer neighborhoods where it's, it's gated now, we've done that where, you know, it's electronic gate to get in out of the back parking lot. They can still climb that. They still, like Scott, like you said, we talked about earlier, if somebody wants to do harm, that's like, well, we got a guy who got fired. He's, you know, what if he comes back? You don't think he can figure out, he worked here for 20 years. You don't think he can figure out how to get in here if he wanted to, you know, so you know, and, and I agree, Scott, there's probably some people who say, yeah, but you have to do stuff. Well, what is enough? And that, and that's why we, we, we titled this show. The whole thing is how much is too much? How much is too little when it comes to firehouse security? So, you know what, Chief, I, I, I think and, and I, I agree with what Scott said. There's a balance. You got to figure out what that balance is. Your balance is, is not the same as, as ours. And maybe Station 7 and Flower Mound is a little bit different than their Station 1. It certainly is with our stations, but for me, this is all about your, your personnel in those stations. Pay attention to what's going on. You know, when someone calls you on the phone and says, lock it down, hey, have a plan, yeah. figure it out. And, and it, it, it's not a time to ask questions. It's not a time to run out and investigate. It, there's nothing that's off the table at this point. Hey, I mean, Terry, I let think me interrupt for a second. That's the best point. I don't think this whole thing was out of everything everybody's talked about. When you said that, and I, I keep going through my head. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I got to, when you said, when they said lock it down, like most people, wait a minute, what, what, what you know, I want, yeah. they locked it down. You know, I mean, yeah. it was, it was something that, that if anything out of this meeting, out of this hump day, you know, you need to write an, an SOG, an SOP for your department says, if you have this type of, you know, incident go down, when, you know, what does a lockdown mean? And it means that you don't go, well, you know, Chief Greaser, I just want to see what's going on. Now you got a dead firefighter because this guy, I, I, my my whole gut feeling is this guy would have shot your guys. He would have shot them. I think that's what he wanted. That's why he's mad. Where the f you are? I know you're in here, just like you said that. I think he would. I think he would have. There would have been a good chance he would have done that. And we're talking a whole horrible, god awful tragedy, which your guys did. Like Terry, so Terry, go back. I, mean, I just had to say that. No, a, no, but I, I, you know, I think at the end of the day, you know. I live in Flower Mound. I'm, I mean, after this hump day, I might, you know, look for another place to live. Apparently, Chief Greaser's, you know, but I, I live in Flower Mound. I, I think I live in a really nice neighborhood, but I can tell you this. Every night when I go to bed, I make sure my garage door's closed. Um, I, you know, it, I mean, it's simple stuff, and I don't think that's any different than at a fire station. Pay attention to what's going on. In Louisville, we don't have a problem with our guys taking a nap. I don't want all of them taking a nap. I want someone, you know... 
I like that watch area and I like, you know, I know in Dallas fire stations, that watch area, really nothing happens in that bay that that person doesn't know or see what's going on out there. But the design of stations now, that's not really how it works anymore. Everybody has their own cubicles and their own space and their own iPads and their own, you know, whatever. But if you've got five guys in a fire station and they all go back and hunker down in the center of this uh, building and no one's paying attention. Right. And so, you know, I, I think that the, the common sense factor has to come into this and say what happened in Flower Mound is absolutely unfortunate. It's a freak deal. I, 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 I'll count my blessings and say that it happened close enough to us. That it's probably not lightning going to strike twice over here in Louisville. But at the same time, if that phone rings and dispatch says, hey, X, Y, Z, hey, figure it out and, and have a plan. It ain't the time to, to, to wander around going, well, I wonder what they meant by that. You know, so I think uh, I think it's a conversation. I think all administrations should have this conversation. I think this is a conversation that needs to be had with the personnel and just understand nothing's off limits. I mean, listen, the day a person walks into Sandy Hook Elementary School and decides to shoot kids, you think they give a crap that you're a firefighter? You think they give a crap that, that you got a red vest, a yellow vest, a, a blue? It's everyone's fair game now in, in this weird world. And, uh, and, and so right now I think you just gotta be, you gotta pay attention. And, well, uh, and you gotta pay attention. And, 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 and we just gotta, you know, our producer Pete posted a comment for William Blackwell. Appreciate William. Uh, he says, I think Thompson's on point. We need to be alert, but we have to capital have be approachable. Our bloodline is our connection to the community. So I think all of us are, we're strong believers that we have to stay connected but we do have to address some things and that's our policies and our procedures. One thing, and, and Eric and, and, and Terry, Scott, is I think where, we, where we're where lax, and Bobby, you know, when we were doing it is at night, we used to, I, where I came from, I wanted a captain. The captain did a, did, a, did a 360. When it was time for everybody to turn in or whatever, at the end of the night, you did a three, you made sure the apparatus bays were closed. That, you know, that whole thing, make sure the station's here. Because what happened at Firehouse 6 in Louisville is they left the back bay open. And she came in and she burglarized the place with her sleep and walked in in a bunk room. I mean, oh my God. So just you, like Terry, you said it, you made me think of it. At night, I do the same thing. I have a camera in my garage so I can look to make sure our garage door is closed. That's the only reason it's in the garage. I can pull up my ring. Okay, the garage is closed because there's been times like, holy crap, I left the door open for, an hour, you know, whatever. And we live in a nice neighborhood, but I, you know, same thing. Part of your SOG should be when it comes to station security, firehouse security, Someone needs to do at the end of the night a 360, you know, where you walk around, make sure it's secured. Okay, we're good to go. Time to go to bed or hunger, whatever you're going to do. You know, I like the idea of somebody being awake. I like the watch stuff. You know, somebody, you know, what are you doing? Kind of maybe securing certain areas of the firehouse, but keeping the rest open or whatever. The, 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 the lock it down kind of thing. I think there's a lot of incredible lessons, Eric, out of what happened with your department that people could fine tune their process without shutting out the public, without saying yeah. we stay out of our firehouse where, you know, like, like Terry said, I, you know, there are days when you, they're bringing, you said they're bringing in cookies to that firehouse all the time. I, I, we love our firefighters and you had a guy walk in there and they end up with a shootout. So, I mean, you know, uh, I, I think, I think fine tuning your process is something that all the bosses need to, be. this is one of those where you get your people together and say, okay, Look at what we have. What do we have for a policy regarding, you know, building security? And if we don't, we need to come up with one. And there's plenty out there. Or if we do, do we have to do any fine tuning? They may say, no, everything looks good. We've run through this. I think we're in good shape. Look, we can't keep everything from coming into our fire. We can't, you know, can't predict everything. We can't keep everything from happening. But are we doing our due diligence? I guess it is. We like that phrase to make sure we're looking at every avenue to kind of pick our folks, right, Eric, to, to, to take care of our, our people. Yeah, for sure. You know, Scott, what do you think, buddy? No, just to just agree. And, and uh, you know, so, certainly something that, that I'm going to take from this, like you said, is we're going to go back and have that policy about the lockdown immediately to find what that means and don't question. I mean, I think that's a huge thing right there uh, um, that, that we certainly, because I don't, I don't think we had, you know, it's assumed that we know what that means, but every firehouse is going to handle that differently. So that that's great. And just, just knowing that man, nothing is beyond possibility in this, this day. You know, my, my son works down in South Dallas right now. And, and, and uh, 
the stuff he tells me about every day, it's, it's spreading this way, unfortunately. And uh, times have changed. Be on your toes, be aware. And I can hear Gordon Graham blowing his, his horn whistle, right? The train coming down the tracks. Some things we know are coming. Let's address those. The other things, let's just hope they don't happen. Exactly. Bobby, any closing thoughts, buddy? It's, I, I love the, I love the lock it down means lock it down. That's a great, I agree with Scott. I agree with Eric. That's a great policy to train on. Just like, you know, abandon the ship means ab abandon ship. Mayday means mayday. Lock it down means lock it down. You, you just, you just do it. You know, and once it's completed, then you can ask why or whatever, but you know, it should be do it now, lock it down. So I love that. What a great takeaway. Great, great ad. No, that's, that's, I'm good, Ricky. I've got to, I've got to run to gate H15 and head back to the state of Texas. Although I'll be wearing my proud Oklahoma face diaper um, at, when I land, just to, just to rub it in you guys' noses. Just kidding. Just kidding. Everybody in Texas wishes they were in Oklahoma. Come on, let's just be honest about it. I'm just teasing. <laughs> they tell I'm us here all the time that anybody north of the Red River is a Yankee. So I just, you know. Oh, oh, there you go. But, so anyway, uh, th I wanted to say thank you. It was great to see Eric, and it was great to see Scott and everybody. I apologize for getting on late. Um, but uh, travel. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing Charles and the gang down in San Antonio. We're all going out to dinner tonight. and ought to be a blast. Uh, Mike Mullins and Brian. Uh, so it, it should be fantastic. So It's a nice, uh, cool 102 degrees. Man, I'm looking forward to that. So um, the, the other thing, too, I just want to mention FDIC registration is, is open. Please register. Summer school is on. We're going to do summer school on the first week of August. And then we're going to head down to San Antonio and we're going to do EMS summer school at EMS today. And that's going to be in the middle of August. So there's your whole August. You can be you know, going to conferences. And so please register for that. And the call for presentations, I've extended it on both. Um, they were a little lighter than they normally are. And I think it's just so many things going on and people coming out of their cocoons and and all that kind of good stuff. So, you know, if you, if you thought you missed the call for presentations, it's, it's open. And uh, a ca uh, Cap, I was going to call him Captain Greaser. When I, when I worked with him, Chief Greaser, it, I, would, uh, I did not see your uh, proposal. So uh, this is fair, <laughs> fair warning. You better get it in. So, uh, you know, that's not a bad idea, Bobby, is, is and not to put this could on be a, spot, this could be a, this could be a great, this could, this could be a great proposal for FDIC, man. What Just to do? You know, how many times, Bobby, you told us on the advisory board, when you've got a great case study, something we can learn from, you know, right. to have somebody come and say, hey, guys, right or wrong, first, this is what happened. And especially, Eric, you guys, the firsthand experience, that is huge, man. You know, you're not telling somebody else's story. You're telling your story. Yeah. You're yeah. telling your story. So, but thank you for having me. And, and uh, you know, uh, uh, outstanding. Great. Safe travels okay. and go fly the plane. I'm sure you're going to be up there flying. And, and what happened to Eric's hair? I, I, I remember when Eric had wavy black hair, man. You got old, dude. Uh huh. Didn't we all? It's, it's that fifth trumpet, man. It's that fifth trumpet. As soon as you do it, it's like, you know, everything. But uh, anywho, well, thanks, Bobby. Terry, got closing thoughts, buddy? Now, I, I appreciate uh, Chief Greaser jumping on with us kind of kind of late uh, late minute, but sharing those stories, like I said, it's uh, I always like to hear from the from the source and and uh, and and those type of stories is what makes us all uh, gives us all the opportunity to get better. Um, and uh, and it's nice to be able to to you know to take this information and share it with uh, share it with our guys and and. Uh, and, uh, but I, I appreciate it. I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm curious to know the body shop is going to fix the gunfire in a flower mount engine. I'll see how that turns out, but, uh, I think they're in Louisville. We're, we're bringing the <laughs> medic over to Louisville and I'm only halfway kidding. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, no, I appreciate you coming on. And, and honestly, I would, I would encourage anybody out there, have the conversation, have, uh, let's talk about this. I, I like the idea of, you know, a, a station lockdown policy and that, you know, in, in just not to spool this back up, but in your particular case, like if I'm sitting here thinking to myself, all right, lock the station down. First thing I would do is run to the bay to close the bay doors. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's one of those things you got to got to and, 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 you know, pay attention, know what's going on. There's cars in your parking lot. 
figure out why they're there and, you know, things like that. So yeah. uh, anyway, thanks for sharing. Good point. Absolutely. Chief Greaser, closing thoughts, buddy. No, it certainly is my honor to, to be on with you all today. You know, uh, Chief Alton you know, reminded us that we've all fought for fire together, how cool that is. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just a changing time. And I think, you know, is, is society even changed more post COVID? Um, but I agree with Chief Thompson that, you know, I don't want to change the fire service. I don't want to change being the icon of the community and uh, be open and approachable and be here to serve our community. That's our, our core value of service. And, you know, we, man, we can't get away from, you know, being, being what the fire service is, but yet be vigilant, be aware, uh, be watchful. Heck, you know, don't, don't distrust somebody to come in and use the restroom. Um, you know, we got, we got to watch out for anybody that's in our facilities. That's right. Don't let, like, like Terry said earlier, Eric, when he was a cop in Dallas, in South Dallas, just because of where he was at, every single time he was at work, he was on alert because of where he was at versus somewhere where they have like next to nothing crime wise, you let your, you know, Hey, complacency is just a fancy word for laziness. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, all the years I've been teaching uh, for South Lake, you know, since 2014, stepping off their leadership academy for their police and fire there. Whenever they tell me, you know, we talk about, you know, secure area. I'm like, yeah, I, I drive by this memorial every time I come to teach here that is dedicated to these state troopers that were killed by Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde gunned them down right here, right, right there. There's a memorial right there, you know, uh, in South Lake, you know, at the border of Grapevine, you know, where, where this happened. Um, yeah, a long time ago, but like I think we've all said, it can happen anywhere. So, you know, for, for those out there, you know, look at your policies, look at your SLGs, look at your door security, your parking lot security. Ryan Wagner asked a question about uh, how many departments have security cameras that can be monitored from the watch room or have the ability. Some places have it where you can click on a television or nowadays with, with smartphones or whatever or things like that. Um, look at your firehouse security again. Take a look. Just see what you've got in a way of monitoring things. Do you have the ability to get to where you can shut the doors all from one location if you have two front and rear if you need to shut your overhead doors from inside? You know, is, uh, you know, how secure are you? How unsecure are you? We don't want to, I agree with everybody. We don't want to shut the world out. We've always prided ourselves on being part of the community. But at the same time, you know, we got to look at what we're doing and how we're doing it and, and make sure we haven't missed anything, I guess is what I'm saying. Like I said, as much as it was a pain in the rear, every time I want to get into the living quarters at Trophy Club, either to punch the, the, the you know, the code or use the car key, people, you can, you can walk in anytime, you know, you wanted to, you know, that in the bays and stuff, but we had it where at least you had to ring a doorbell or do an intercom or come into the vestibules and say, can I see a firefighter? You know, agree or disagree, that might not be, you know, but look at your SOGs, look at what you're doing. Uh, uh, maybe, you know, again, you know, three sixties once in a while, especially before you go to bed, as to how you could take care of things. So, Eric, if um, if anybody wanted to get a hold of, if there's another chief out there, and I hope you don't. Well, there's always that fear of getting bombarded uh, with stuff. But uh, if somebody wanted to get a hold of Chief Grease and go, tell me what you did for your guys. What did you do, critical incident stress management for your guys? Because you know we just right. talked about two days in a row. Oh my God, you know that kind of thing. What did you do for your guys? Or have you done anything with your firehouses or whatever? Uh, what is email the best way for them to get a hold of you? You bet. What would that um, be? Eric, E R I C dot greaser, G R E A S E R, at flower dash mound dot com. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, Eric, thank you so much, brother, for you're a good friend, a good for a great friend to all of us, and a, a great boss. Like I said, one of my absolute favorite fire departments, uh, uh, the ones that I always looked forward to seeing when I saw them at a, at a call. Thank you so much. Scott, if they want to get a hold of you, you buddy, email Scott at fireserviceleadership.com. Perfect, perfect. Terry? T. McGrath at cityoflewisville.com. Perfect. And Bobby's walking through the airport with his mask on, but if you need to get a hold of Chief Halton, if you can't figure that out, you're sleeping in a hole. I, we used to say, just open up the magazine. Just open up the front cover, get in there. You'll figure out how to get a hold of, of Chief Halton. There's a million ways to, to get to his email address at Clarion. But uh, I'm at Chief Lasky at, at gmail.com. Uh, and uh, Guys, another great show. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, thanks for all those that were watching us. Bobby, thanks for joining us uh, from the airport. Um, if you want that fire station safety inspection form, you know, email me. I'll send that to you. 
another great show. Uh, we're all on Facebook for the most part and Twitter and our firehouses and fire departments, uh, uh, both Louisville, the County of Pharma do great jobs with getting word out on social media. Uh, you know, uh, doing a great job putting the fire service in a positive light on social media, posting some great stuff. Uh, but just head over to those sites. You want to see us our next show for the group. And uh, we'll have uh, John Salka with us next month. will be July 21st. Uh, we always mention that Fire Engineering has some great hangouts Wednesdays at noon central time, 1 Eastern with some awesome people. We've got the podcast tonight. Don't forget, FTIC is in August, the 2nd through the 7th. Come on out, have some fun, get fired up. I'm still working, Bobby, with Monster. We want to, we want Monster to rename a drink that week. It's just going to be Monster FTIC because that is my Monster Energy drink going to, going to Indy. Deadlines have been ex extended for to July second for your for your programs for for next April for 2022. Um, but uh, that's it. In closing, uh, the group we always ask you to please keep the men and women uh, in our armed forces in your thoughts and prayers. And we'll say this again: uh, do the same thing for our brothers and sisters in law enforcement. They need our support more than ever right now. There's 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 just got tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of great police officers out there that. Uh, that, that need our support. Have them in your firehouse for a cup of coffee, invite them in for lunch, for dinner, take care of them, um, you know, look, look out after them just like they would for us. So God bless those in law enforcement. Thank you everybody for tuning in. God bless you. And we'll catch you next time.